Well, hi everybody, it's Greg, and uh, today I want to talk about the Zoom F8 audio recorder. A lot of videos out there will tell you all the features this thing has, but I want to talk specifically about power options for the F8. Just FYI, I'm going to record all the audio that you're hearing now with the F8 and these two NT5 microphones from Rode. So, you know, a little demo of how that all sounds together. You might be curious what these budget microphones sound like. So, um, as far as power options for the F8, well, the obvious ways to power it would be, first of all, you could use the AC adapter that came with it. Just plug this in to the back. Plug this into an AC power source, which uh, I happen to have one right here. And there you go, you're good to go. Now, obviously that's not great for a field recorder. You wanna be out and about in the world. So the other obvious way to power this is to use double A batteries. So there's a little door on the back. You just unscrew a little screw with your fingers and pull out this battery case that is, uh, that's in there. So, and maybe you've noticed just now, I just, I just changed power sources and it was seamless. You didn't hear a blip on the recording and there wasn't anything, any problem with that. So nice to know. Uh, so this power, uh, power pack here, this battery case has uh, four AA batteries on this side, four batteries uh, on the other side. And, um, you know, pretty standard there. It's got the, uh, you know, positive, negative, all alternating configuration there with this little fabric tab to help you to pull those batteries out when it's time to change the batteries. So once you get it all loaded up correctly, all you have to do is close the lid on the top and the bottom. It's got a little ridge on the top, so you can only put it in uh, right side up. And this is, uh, this is uh, the side that is, goes towards you, and this is the side with the battery contact. So you just slide that in, uh, close the door, and just turn that screw with your fingers, and, uh, and you're good to go there. So now that it's powered that way, you can uh, pull the plug on uh, your AC power source, and now you're, you know, you, you're completely portable with that. Now, um, if you had to, in the field, um, change, change your batteries and you didn't have your AC power source, you're gonna say, well, that, that seems like that would take a long time to open up this side and pull every battery out and then put the fresh batteries in and then go to the other side and pull all those batteries out, put the fresh batteries in, get that all configured, finally slide it back in, close the door, power it back on and go again. So is there any way to speed up that process? And in fact, um, when this first became available, it came with that battery case, uh, but you couldn't buy a spare. But now you can buy a spare battery case, so I did. So now, um, if you have this already loaded with your next set of batteries, then if you didn't have some power source like this AC source going, you just uh, power down, open the door, slide this one out, slide the other one in, close the door, and that is a fast way to be on your way again. So um, another question you're probably thinking is, well, how long will the batteries last before I have to change them for fresh batteries? And so I did an endurance test here and I used my Eniloop rechargeable batteries. Uh, if you don't know about those, look them up. Um, they're great, Eniloop batteries. So uh, when I, when I did my endurance test, uh, they went for about three and a half, just slightly more than three and a half hours before they were depleted and had to shut down the unit. So three and a half hours, that's not bad. That's better than what I expected, actually. The F8 has a lot of different configurations. I mean, you can record to one channel or all eight channels or any combination in between. You can record in MP3 format. You could record 44-1, you know, 16-bit, which is CD quality, all the way up to 192K, 24-bit. So for my test, I tried to pick something a little bit kind of a real-world example for video guys. So uh, what I did was I recorded four channels of audio uh, with 48-volt phantom power going to those four channels. And I also recorded two additional channels without phantom power, so six channels altogether. 
uh, on my recording and with that endurance test, that's where I got the three and a half hours of run, running time. So I figured if you're out there in the field and uh, maybe after two and a half hours, you can start to think of if there's a good convenient time to power down long enough to change your batteries and then power back up and keep going. And so that, that would give you about an hour uh, to pick a good moment to do that. Now, maybe you're still thinking, you know, sometimes I record seminars, those guys go on and on. You're never quite sure when they're going to stop. And, and there's really not a convenient time just even to take a few seconds to do that quick swap that I just showed you. So there are other power options that will last you much longer than three and a half hours and that do not require you to use uh, some sort of you know, plugging into a wall somewhere and being on the grid. So a good thing you can use there is a third battery option or power option here on the side of the F8, and that is a Hirose connector. Now, there's some controversy about the right way to pronounce that. Some people call it Hirose, Hyros. Some people try to avoid the controversy by just calling it an HRS connector. But I know that in other parts of the English-speaking world, we might say uh, HRS. So there's still a pronunciation controversy there. But basically, uh, I'm going to call it Hirose, and I'll apologize if that's going to bug you. But um, this little, little connector here, it has four pins in there. This is the male end. I bought a little cable like this from, from Marker Tech. And this corresponds to the female uh, opening here for your Hirose connector. So this is uh, somewhat of an industry standard. A lot of devices use a connector like this. And um, so, yeah, so I just got this uh, little little adapter here. So on the, on the one end is a standard DC connector. Um, I think it's 5.5 millimeter, 2.1 millimeter center, 5.5 uh, on, the, on the outer sleeve. And this is, um, this is based on the idea that you're going to have a negative on the outer sleeve and positive on the tip, and that would be the polarity for your DC power source. And what that will do then, if you hook it up that way, negative on the outer sleeve, positive on the tip, that's going to send negative to pin number one on this connector and positive to pin number four, which is the correct way to power your Zoom F8. So if I plug this guy into here, now now I can hook up uh, any DC power source to this anywhere from 9 volts all the way up to 16 volts. So there's some versatility there. In my case, I happen to have, um, you know, the cameras I'm using right now to make this video are Sony cameras and they use this BP style Sony battery. This is a third party battery, but it's, uh, you know, it's nice. It has a little button here that if you press this, these LEDs light up and indicate how much power is left. So four LEDs, so about 25% power for each LED that lights up. So this is a, rated as a 14.4 volt battery. Now how am I going to get this power into the F8, which can take 14.4 volts. It can go uh, from 9 up to 16 with this connector. Now the other connector here for your uh, AC adapter, uh, Really, you should only use the AC adapter on that because it's only the specifications say it's only for 12 volts. But this Hirose connector, this is the one that can take nine all the way up to 16 volts. So, how do I get this in there? Well, I found uh, I found this adapter <laughs> uh, online, and so this is simple. You just uh, attach your battery there, and then it's going to give you your um, output from the battery. To this right here or it actually has a female connector right there so that means all I have to do is plug this right into there and it actually will now access the 14.4 volts out of this battery and send it right into the Hirose connector however it's actually not 14.4 volts when the battery is fully charged if I go in here to my menus and I scroll down here to system and then I go to power source it's actually now showing me a readout of what I'm getting off of these various sources that are right now all plugged in. My DC source, that's the uh, adapter that came with the F8. That's putting out 12.1 uh, volts, so it's right there where it needs to be. Uh, this battery is up to, actually up to 16.1, this uh, camera battery, when it's fully charged. So even though it's rated for 14.4, when it's fully charged, it's putting out 16.1. And then it also is showing me that my uh, my freshly charged AA batteries that are in there 
are putting out 11.1 volts. So right now, all those voltages are being read by the F8. However, there's a hierarchy. So even though they're all available to the F8, first it's going to draw from um, the AC adapter. That's, that's first priority. If that one is unplugged, then it's going to start drawing from the Hirose connector. And if that one loses power, then it's going to draw from the uh, AA batteries that are inside of it. Now, during normal operation, when you're not on the menu screen here, let's see here. Yeah, it's going to have right up here in the corner, it's going to show you the, uh, the power reading from whatever source it happens to be using at the moment. So right now it's showing me how much voltage it's drawing from the AA batteries. If I plug my, uh, my camera battery back in, it's going to update and show me what the voltage is coming off of that battery. And if I go ahead and plug the AC adapter back in on the back, it's going to update and show me what kind of uh, voltage it's, it's drawing right now from that. So that's all available. So uh, just for fun, let's talk about this Hirose connector that I'm using with my camera battery. And uh, now you might be wondering, okay, using this high capacity battery from the camera, now how long with your endurance test will the zoom recorder run off of this battery? And the answer is about nine hours. In fact, it just kept running and running and running. So after nine hours, I, I stopped it, even though the battery still had a little bit of juice left in it. Uh, as I was going, I was watching the, the, the power meter right here, and it gradually uh, dropped down below 16 volts, you know, just a, another tenth of a volt every now and then until finally it dropped down to 14.4 volts after several hours. And then it got down below 14.0 volts. And at that point, when I would push the button on the battery that's supposed to uh, indicate how much power is left in the battery, it wasn't giving me any readout at all uh, on how much was left in the battery. So rather than drain this battery too much, uh, watching that meter there, I decided after nine hours, that was a good enough test. I was going to stop. And so that's why, that's what happened with, with this. Now, um, this is just kind of the medium capacity style battery for this particular kind of camera. The battery that comes with it is about half this size. Then there's this one, which um, offers about double the power if you look at the milliamp hour rating. And then there's one that's uh, a little bit bigger that sticks out to here that has an even higher capacity. And so I can only assume that would uh, run the zoom recorder for even more than nine hours. So I figured nine hours is good enough Again, I caution you not to drain your batteries too far down all the way to, you know, absolute zero. So um, I would say if you're doing it this way, a typical movie shoot or whatever, you probably have a, a lunch break after six hours. Maybe that's a good time to swap the battery out and, uh, and recharge it and go with whatever other one you're using. But, you know, between this and the ability to swap out these AA uh, battery cases, you know, you could easily go all day a couple of these ready to swap and while these are swapping you power off of this and uh, you know I, th I think you're all set. Now um, what if you didn't have this little female connector on the side of your of your uh, camera battery doodad? Well then that's an easy fix here because it turns out that uh, well with these particular devices I have um, it's the same size connector there, the little DC connector. So I bought this barrel adapter. Uh, you call it a, a barrel coupler. You can look for it if that's, uh, that's what you're shopping for online. And that makes the same, the same connection if you've got two male ends that you're trying to match up. And, um, and also gives you just a little bit more, more cable if you need just, you know, an extra foot or two of cable in order to, uh, to make that connection. But I, f I, th I thought that was a fascinating way to run the F8 for hours and hours and hours and hours with, with phantom power, with however many channels you want. Uh, you know, that works nice. And then uh, one more thing that I decided I might try, because it just sounds exciting here. Um, how about this guy? Bought this at Harbor Freight. You've seen these. See these battery packs, you know. Uh, made so you can jump start a car if you're in a, in case of emergency or if you're going camping and you need some extra light You know, you've got that option on it has a power inverter on the back. So this is kind of fun 
Got it from Harbor Freight. Come on, don't be a snob. We all buy a little bit at Harbor Freight sometime. This happens to come with um, uh, this, this cable here, which is designed for use so when you're driving in the car, you can plug this into the car, you know, car outlet, and then you plug this into this big battery case in order to, to charge it. Well, what I decided to do instead was to plug this guy into the little uh, DC outlet on this big old battery pack, okay? And now I have the, the power coming off that battery pack and that big heavy battery going to here. And now I'm going to plug this in to the Hirose connector cable that I got for the F8. So, okay, that's showing 13.4 volts. So uh, I think, uh, judging from the size of that battery, that's going to go an awful long time. I would guess uh, at least 12 hours if you want to lug around a battery source like that. Uh, so, you know, that's just kind of fun. Lots of options, especially if you're out in the field and you don't think you're going to be able to take a break necessarily at a convenient time for changing batteries. Well... And again, with this, with the seamless way that it, it switches from one source to another without interrupting your recording, that's very nice. Um, other people have suggested using something like this. Uh, I got this. It's actually an older model of uh, battery pack. This is designed for use with laptop computers or maybe portable DVD players. This is from Techion. And I got it from Newegg. A lot of these you get today, they only offer a USB output, so you can charge your cell phones or your iPods or iPads or whatever that, uh, that take power from a USB cord. But this one is more versatile than that because when I plug in this, uh, this cord on it, it allows me to uh, select various voltages all the way up to 12 and 14 volts. And so in order to power the F8, I could stick this to 12 volts and then I could use this with the Hirose connector and, uh, and get my power that way. And this will last, um, it's not a great battery, it's not super heavy, but it'll last to probably about, about three hours. Um, and, you know, and that's, that's worth something. Uh, some people have used this because it's the same size plug that, you know, all these things I've been showing you are using the same size plug. Some people will plug this directly into the back of the F8 as though it were the AC adapter. And I think that's probably safe because it is 12 volts. You wanna make sure you have it set to 12 volts so it matches what the AC adapter is trying to do. So some people use that, they avoid the Hirose connector, but I like having the Hirose connector because that allows me all these other versatile options. And um, also I'll just say that, uh, you know, you just don't want to be feeding the wrong, the wrong voltages into the wrong places. So the Hirose connector makes it safe to vary that voltage all the way from 9 up to 16 volts. Or in the case of this, 16.1, I think that was okay. And I, probably after about 20 minutes at least, it would be down below 16 uh, on the power there. So just one more thing I wanted to cover. If you go into the setup menus here, go into System... And once again, we'll look at our power source settings. So here it allows you to, let me plug in a Hirose power uh, option as well. It allows you to configure this so that your metering is more accurate. And so some of the other functions are, are better based on the power that you're using. So if you're using AA batteries, it allows you to choose and tell it whether you're using nickel metal hydride batteries or lithium batteries or alkaline batteries. And that's going to help you um, make sure that the metering is correct for those batteries. So um, that's nice. And then here also with you using the uh, external DC source, which is your Hirose cable connection, uh, that's also going to allow you to set your nominal voltage uh, to whatever the, the battery is normally rated for, and also your shutdown voltage. So if you want to make sure that the battery doesn't, uh, doesn't drain too far, 
your shutdown voltage can go from anywhere from 9 up to, well, 13 volts is a shutdown voltage setting you can you, you use there. And so it'll it, if it reaches that, it's going to automatically shut itself down before it just blips out and you know stops. Or if you have double A batteries already inserted, what it's going to do when it reaches that shutdown voltage is just switch from the Hirose power, just switches right over to the uh, uh, you know the the double A batteries that are in there. So, but again, you're going to be able to go hours and hours and hours if you're using these kinds of external battery sources. So uh, you probably uh, after a few hours, you're going to want to take a break anyway. That would be a good time to swap out batteries and, and uh, be ready to go again. All right, so there's a little overview on battery options. And again, this, this battery cradle that I got for the Sony battery, a lot of people use this to power black magic cameras. So if you're going to look for that online somewhere, uh, look for, you know, some sort of black magic power source. Um, there are other batteries, NP1 style batteries and B-mount batteries and just all kinds of professional batteries that people might already have if they're doing professional video. And so this is nice that you can use those batteries, stock up on the batteries you're already using in order to provide extra power options for your F8. Uh, this particular battery plate that I got, uh, I got it from a third party through Amazon out of China. So I, I just went the budget route and decided to take a chance on that. It was... Uh, $30. But you can get this with a little more recognized industry names on it like ICANN uh, or Nebtech and you might be paying $60, $65 for something like this. To me, uh, you know, it's worth taking the risk and trying the Chinese version, uh, uh, the, the cheapo version. But, uh, you know, I, I don't necessarily uh, dissuade you from going with uh, a, a more trusted name brand if that's what you want. Also, just to be clear, this little cable adapter that I purchased, this came from MarkerTech. And so um, I could have bought this connector and made my own cable, but I was concerned that maybe there was small things inside there that might be very difficult to solder, or there was some mention of a special crimping tool. And so I thought I'll pay a little bit extra and get just a pre-made cable that uh, I won't have to worry about. Uh, one thing you do want to make sure, however, if you're looking at these cables online, and there might be an illustration to tell you to show you what you're getting. Sometimes, depending on the illustration, it's very difficult to see whether you're actually looking at a male connector or a female connector. So uh, I almost got the wrong thing just before I hit, you know, order on, on the web page. I realized, oh, I had the wrong thing. I because this is a female connector. On the Zoom recorder, you need a male connector on the, the power source that you're going to put into it. So, again, the illustration not always clear because you're looking into a dark, um, you know, little dark area there, and so from the picture you can't tell. But, but if you just be careful about ordering it, you'll get the right thing, and you'll be on your way. All right, thanks, and uh, I hope. You're having a good time with this. I have just barely scratched the surface of what this can do for me, but I'm excited to have this kind of versatility at a really impressive price, and uh, the quality is great, and so uh, I want you to have some fun with it too. Have fun with your power options, and go!